Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another MBS Spotlight Fair brought to you by the GMAT Club, where we connect you to the best of the best business schools in the world. And when we say best of the best business schools, we actually mean it. Because today on the panel, we have the beautiful London Business School, represented by the wonderful Charlotte Smith and Tanuj Srivastava. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Tanuj. How are you doing today? Hey, Ankit. Hi, Ankit. Thank you for having us. Yeah, really excited. Yes. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. My name is Selby. I'm also a GMAT Club moderator. And as Ankit has said, we have got Charlotte Smith, who will be taking us through the presentation, after which we'll be going through a Q&A. Uh, guys, we will be offering some prizes for you for attending the session. Um, the prize drawing will be done at the end. So if you want to enter the prize drawing, the link to it will be uploaded on the chat box. Also, during the slide, feel free to ask any questions that you have in the chat box. We will try addressing them during today's session. Last but not least, do give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. It'll only take a minute of your time. And I'll turn it over to you guys. Thank you so much, Selby. Um, so uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's session with us at London Business School. My name is Charlotte, and I am the Senior Global Recruitment Manager at London Business School, working alongside all of my colleagues in the recruitment and admissions team. We are here to support you with your business school research and your admissions journey. So as we continue in this uh, sometimes virtual, sometimes hybrid world, we are delighted to remain connected with you, our global community. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I can see in the comments now we have people joining us from all over the world. So thank you. Um, we hope that you have already been able to join us for some of our online events where we've shared information on our portfolio of master's programs, including the MBA um, and its curriculum, the career focus within the sector series and career conversations um, around admissions information and, and more than that as well. Um, so today we're going to take the opportunity to really hone in on what the LBS experience thrives from, and that is our LBS community. Um, so do not worry in case you haven't had the chance to join us for any sessions previously and today I just have 30 minutes with you and I could talk all day about LBS and the MBA. Um, you can join us at future sessions. So for example, this Saturday, we have um, a virtual MBA open day where I'll be joined by the Recruitment and Admissions Director, David Simpson, on all admissions need to knows. Um, and we'll have additional sessions as well with students, alumni, and our career center. Um, for today though, I'm going to share a few slides to provide a quick overview of LBS and our MBA program. And then I'm also joined by Tanuj, our MBA 2022 student, so currently in his second year of the MBA program at LBS. Um, and I'm going to invite Tanuj to share some of his experience to date with you. Um, and then we'll open up and answer all of your questions. So please do prepare them and send them through as and when you have them. So let's get started on our snapshot shot uh, presentation on the MBA program specifically. So um, I wanted to share with you, first of all, um, a look at what our MBA class generally looks like. So we admit one class per year. Uh, Tanuj is part of the MBA 2022 graduating class, and this is an overview of our MBA 2023 graduating class. So they joined us in August this year. Um, it is made up of 511 students, um, and in general, it's around 500 students year on year. Um, that 500 is then broken into streams of around 70 students and Tanuj can tell you a little bit more about his stream and study group um, as we move forward today. Um, so 38% of those of that class um, it, oh, is made up of women. Um, so we work incredibly hard for that as an international school to uh, strive towards gender parity. Um, but we will continue to move towards that 50% year on year is our ambition. Um, so the average age of the class is actually 29 and that really goes hand in hand with the average years of work experience being five and a half. Do not fear if you're a little bit older or younger or you have more or less years of work experience. They really are an average just to give you an idea of what that class looks like. Tanuj, for example, had around seven years of experience prior to joining the MBA. So it really does vary. Um, we have a very diverse peer group. 
90% of the class are international, so just 10% are actually UK nationals. Um, and the the breadth of diversity across the across the program is vast. So from all regions of the world, um, as we can see in our comments box today, um, LBS really does attract a diverse audience. Um, and then the average GMAT score, um, seeing as we're at a GMAT club event, is 708. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about other admissions requirements as we move through this presentation. So what is the LBS MBA? There's a QR code on there. So if you can um, use, use your phone to scan that, it will take you to the brochure so you can find out far more in-depth information about the program itself. But just to give you a quick overview, it's a two-year MBA program. It is full-time and based out of our London campus. We also have a campus in Dubai for executive MBA. Um, before uh, any of our students step foot onto campus, there's an online preparation. So there are some online modules to complete, um, but our students are now back to classroom first. So all learning is being conducted in person in London. So once students start in the first term, we have what we call business fundamentals. And it really is what it says on the tin it is the most prescribed our MBA will get um, with our students taking part in many various areas of business fundamentals. Um, so lots of different modules, uh, which are really important to make sure that everybody, seeing as we have such a diverse sector background across our class as well, um, has some of the key elements of business within that first term uh, delivered to them. Then as we move through the rest of the first year, term two and term three, we have core courses, but this is where you really start to tailor your MBA. So we call them the tailored core. Um, and that's because you select which courses you are most interested in and um, perhaps being led by what your future aspirations are. Um, this is also where some of our experiential learning comes into. So for example, the London CAP project, which is a 10 week consulting project with London based companies. And um, Tanuj, for example, uh, took part in that uh, working with Google for that for that uh, project itself. So there are lots of different examples of that and we can maybe dive into that if we have time as well. Um, and then that takes us up to summer. So the summer is unfortunately not a summer break. Um, it is uh, either entrepreneurship summer school or an internship and our students have the opportunity to choose uh, which they go for. Panuj, being in his second year, has completed his internship this year with Twitter. So again, we'll go on to find out a little bit more um, about that. And then the second year really is a blank canvas. Um, it's very flexible. Um, and this is where you will start to do your electives, um, which you may have started towards the end of the first year. You'll select between 10 and 12 electives. Um, you may choose to concentrate in one specific subject area. Um, you can also um, complete your global experience, which is a one week experience uh, in various locations around the world, or you can conduct it virtually as well, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Um, and then the rest is optional. So you may want to take part in um, an international exchange, um, various business projects. You may want to do further internships. It really is up to you and so flexible that you can also choose when you exit the MBA. So although I mentioned that it is a two year full time MBA program, there are options to exit at 15 and um, 18 months as well. So I mentioned global experiences. Um, these change year on year um, and they are completely managed by our uh, internal experience team. Um, so for the year ahead, these are some of the options for our MBA students. Um, you can see uh, the majority of the ones on here are where our students will be having the in-person experience. I've also put an example of one of the uh, virtual experiences available this year. Students can choose whether they do it in person or virtual. Um, and obviously we have that flexibility due to um, current circumstances. Um, you can see the theme with the with each location as well and that really does match the location and we leverage that location for that theme uh, when our students travel. So I wanted to move on now to talk a little bit about the career side of the MBA. Of course, most people are choosing to pursue an MBA because they're either looking to progress, accelerate their career 
or they're looking to uh, transition into a new sector. So the work that our Career Centre do is really important. Our Career Centre is made up of over 40 staff members. Um, they work in various sectors, both um, engaging employers, but also engaging our students and connecting the two. Um, so this is an overview of how our Career Centre work with our MBA students over the two years of the MBA. You can see that pre-programme, there's already work happening. So once you're an admit, to make sure you're ready to hit the ground running the minute that you uh, start with us in London. Um, and then just to give you an idea of what that then looks like in terms um, of results, you can see the employment report stats from our 2020 class here. Um, so 90% of the graduates accepted an offer within four months. I have actually got for you, hot off the press, um, our MBA 2021 um, employment rate, which is 92% of our graduates accepted an offer within three months after graduation. Um, you can see some of the other stats on here, but for the full MBA 2021 employment report, um, that will be available from January. So do keep your eye out for that. These stats are really important, do have a look at them, um, but our Career Centre is not just a one-stop shop for your next job. Uh, they're really there to provide you with a toolkit, which will be lifelong lasting, um, and to support you in building relationships um, across the alumni network and everybody else at LES to support you with your career as you move forward. And then just to finish off, to run you through some of our admissions requirements at London Business School. This is everything that we require to make up an MBA application. So we have an online application form. I mentioned that word community at LBS um, and we in recruitment and admissions are definitely a part of that. I mentioned that we're here to really support you with your research. But in your application, you'll notice on the application form, we're asking, asking questions to really get to know you as a person, not just what you do professionally or what you studied, uh, but far more than that. So it's quite an in-depth application form. So we recommend opening one and having a look at it as soon as you have made that decision to apply. Um, we require one professional reference. Um, we have two essay questions. One is mandatory, one is optional. Um, they are really looking to learn more about your MBA aspirations. So what are you looking to do following your MBA and why is LBS the place um, for you? Then we require a GMAT or GRE score and we also require your transcripts. That whole process is around a 10 to 12 week process. So once you submit, there's an initial review. You then may then be uh, invited to interview. Interviews are all conducted with our alumni, uh, usually in your home city in person, but sometimes still online. Um, then there's a further review before final decisions. And just to give you an idea of deadlines, um, you can see that we this Thursday are due to send um, admissions decisions for round one for our 2022 intake. Uh, and we still have round two and round three to go. So I'm sure a few of you may be uh, busily uh, preparing your applications for the January deadline in round two. And that's fantastic. Um, round three uh, is also then available end of March. Okay, so um, I wanted to probably stop sharing the slides now and uh, dive into a short conversation with Tanuj where we can learn more about how that all looks in context at LBS. Um, so Tanuj, thank you so much for joining me today. No, oh, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so Tanuj has been in your shoes, absolutely. Uh, we actually met in person at just over two years ago um, at an on-campus event pre-COVID um, in London. Um, and at the time, Tanuja was working for Credit Suisse in London, uh, where he progressed to the role of as Assistant VP um, in the credit trading technology um, area, following um, graduation from his engineering degree at Imperial College in 2013. Um, so as I mentioned, about seven years experience with Credit Suisse there. Um, Tanuj is now a student ambassador at LBS alongside all of the other things that keep an MBA student very busy. Um, and you can find all of our other ambassadors on the website as well if you're looking to connect with some current students. So um, for this conversation, I thought we would start from the very beginning. So taking us back to two years when you joined that information session at LBS. Can you tell me um, why you were there, why you were considering an MBA at LBS at the time, considering you were enjoying an affluent career? Um, but what were you looking for? What were your aspirations? Sure. So um, 
as you mentioned, I had worked for seven years at Credit Suisse. So I had, I was a software engineer for a while. Um, and that was going well, but I realized that I lacked the knowledge around the, how the business is run and what strategy means. I was mostly a software engineer and project manager, and it was to fill the, that gap that I decided to do an MBA. And, and then my plan was to do that and then become a product manager, which would use both my business knowledge and my technical skills um, um, you know, in, in the day to day. In terms of choosing LBS, um, so that actually goes back quite a while ago. My, my sister was went to LBS and I was quite young then. Uh, and I distinctly remember going to her, you know, events and, and just really liking the people who I met there. They were seemed very approachable, even to a young, you know, like a graduate. Um, and I just liked the, the vibe that I was getting. It was very positive. And that sort of memory struck stuck with me. And so when I decided to do the MBA, LBS seemed like the, you know, the obvious choice. And um, and so that was the reason I chose LBS. But of course, like you mentioned, the flexibility is something that also attracted me because I wanted to use the MBA as an opportunity to experiment, not just with my career, but you know, different leadership styles, different courses. And studying at LBS, I have that because I'm doing my second internship right now during term time, only two days a week. And I'm able to manage that with my courses. Plus, I'm able to choose the courses that I really want to do. So I'm it's the first time I'm really invested in the courses I'm doing because I really enjoy learning about them, and I, I'm doing more courses than I, than I'm in, than I'm supposed to do. So, um, so yeah, the, I'm really maximizing the flexibility that is on offer at LBS. Excellent, thank you, Tanush. And while we're there, before I sort of go into my next question, just on you know those classes themselves, which you're clearly enjoying and doing more than you are required to, can you tell me a bit more about the learning experience or the classroom experience um, and what that looks like at LBS? Sure. So, um, unlike my undergraduate degree, most of the courses, in fact, almost all of the lectures, are interactive and are case based. So instead of having the lecturer just lecture for two hours straight, the course, the lecture it itself is a discussion where the learning happens not from the lecturer, but from the peers. So the lecturer may open, may offer an open question based on a case and everyone's input is equally valid. And that is the learning. So we all make notes based on what other people are saying. And I think that was the key difference from my undergrad. And it, the whole experience is very interactive and you like it it's quite humbling because i hear opinions that i would never have thought of before and i think that's the value of diversity um you start appreciating that you know i don't have all the answers and other people have equally valid answers and so you start respecting them and at the end of it overall you, you come out with a very broad understanding of the subject matter and so i think that process is very interactive um and and engaging Great, thank you, Tanuj. And um, then sort of moving from my previous question around what, why you were looking at LBS to then joining, is there anything that you didn't know or didn't find out in your research or didn't maybe expect that has actually become a highlight of your experience so far? I see. Um, yes, I actually, there, there was one thing that I'm really realizing now. It's the the club uh, communities that we have at LBS. It's something that has been a revelation uh, for me since the day I started. And and like now I'm re leading the uh, acting club as the president and that in itself is a very, very rewarding experience. It's almost like a hidden internship that I didn't know that we could take while at LBS because not, I mean, while running the club, I am sort of treating it as a business. So we are worrying about recruitment, marketing, funding, pricing, um, and you know, keeping the team engaged, uh, helping every, helping people achieve what they set out to achieve. And so that is something that I had not expected. But um, I mean, I had not sort of really grasped how effective it was, but now I'm really enjoying it. And I only wish I could do that as my full time job. It's that enjoyable. <laughs> so uh, that, would be nice. that is something that is a highlight for me so far. 
Great, thank you. And yeah, I, I mean, the clubs at LBS, the options are almost uh, limitless. We have over 70 student clubs, um, ranging from professional clubs to social clubs, sports clubs, um, and our inclusion clubs as well. And we're running some events specifically with our clubs throughout uh, the next week. So do keep your eye out for those as well if you're in the audience. So I guess clubs sort of link to my next question, which was around the community. And I mentioned that before, and I really wanted to be able to focus on that and bring a perspective from you um, to this conversation to new show. How would you describe the LBS community? Um, I would say it's a very close knit community. It's almost like a family where everyone looks out for each other. Um, and it was especially evident last year when we were in the middle of lockdown and we were at home in, in lockdown. And, and instead of growing apart, we grew closer because we were doing things to help each other. Um, we had, it, I mean, it's November now, we had a Movember campaign last year and we raised almost 30,000 um, pounds, wow. all virtually. And I had a friend who was who ate a jar of Vegemite uh, for charity <laughs> and we raised 800 pounds in 30 minutes. So that was a clear example of how strong the community spirit is and how everyone um, values that and wants to contribute to the community. Um, other examples that I can think of are um, two people interviewing for the same role and helping each other prepare. I think that was uh, something I didn't expect, but it was very rewarding. Um, also, one day before an exam, I remember my friend calling me uh, to answer a question that I'd asked in a chat. So people go out of their way to help and they do it because they, they get that help from others as well. And I think it's just a very core value uh, of collaboration um, at LBS. Great, thank you, Tanush, for sharing that. And Continuing with that kind of career um, example, I was interested if you could share some examples of how you have leveraged the support of the Career Centre at LBS. So I mentioned your internship with Twitter. You mentioned that you're now completing a second internship. So how have you sort of leaned upon that support or um, made the most of it? And how is it helping you to now sort of shape your second year and what that looks like? Sure, sure. Um, so one of the resources I uh, use a lot is the one-on-one -on -one coaching because um, since last year I've been doing that and I've sort of developed a relationship with the coach and they know who I am and what my values are and so their advice has only got more and more specific and helpful over the years over the last few months um, so that is something I use quite a lot almost as a sounding board to just talk through things there's no agenda I just talk about how I'm feeling about my career and what is it that I want to explore um, the other thing, the other uh, sessions I use a lot are the workshops, which are group based workshops, but they are designed to help you introspect and reflect on where you are and where you want to go. So one of the workshops I did was essentially to do with finding out what your values are. And instead of just sitting at home thinking about my values, we did exercises where other people were invited to comment on what they thought our values were based on the results of an exercise. And that was really valuable because sometimes I miss things while you know reflecting on my own and people were able to spot that very, very um, um, precisely. And I was able to do the same for others. So yeah, those workshops have also been very useful and I think they keep doing them almost every month. So I've been going to all of them uh, since, like, since the start of the year. Good to hear you're making the most of, of all of that. Um, and final question then, before we take some questions from the audience is, I mentioned our flexible exit points on the MBA program. Um, which exit point do you think you will take and why? <laughs> I mean, that, that answer was decided before I even joined. I mean, I'm going for the full 21 month option because I just want to maximize the time I spend here. Uh, and if there was an option to even you know, prolong that, I would do that. Uh, but I'm really excited uh, because, um, well, things have opened up, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I want to sort of travel and go on the treks that we do, which are essentially trips uh, to different parts of the world in groups of you know 80 or 100. Um, I'm also doing the Miami GVE, which was which was shown uh, in the previous slide, um, which I'm really excited about. I'm doing that in the summer in in May next year. So yeah, it's it's because of that those reasons that I want to you know maximize my MBA journey. Great, good to hear, and I'm pleased you're having a great time so far. Um, thank you so much for joining me so far, Tanuj. Um, and I believe Ankit will perhaps now moderate some questions. Hi, hi, Charlotte. Hi, Tanuj. That was a very insightful conversation between the two of you. For a moment there, I was I was I was telling Selby, I don't think we're needed anymore in this session. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
All right, we're going to start off with the first question, which is a pre-submitted question, uh, which is that we we know that R1 ended a couple of months ago, and you're about to start floating the the final decisions. So, what would you say, or or how has the round one been been for the school? Could you talk about any statistics or any trends you can tell us about? And what would you recommend for round two and round three applicants? Yeah, absolutely happy to. And to start with, I'll mention that you, uh, if, if you're looking at applying this year, you may have noticed that we um, have reduced to three rounds this year um, as opposed to four rounds uh, previously. Um, so uh, we have found um, not too much difference in comparison to last year in terms of round one. So um, mm -hmm. higher volume than the year prior to that. Um, I'm sure mm -hmm. that it won't be a surprise to anybody on this call if they've been reading about MBAs and um, the surge in volume of applications across uh, many business schools. Um, so, yeah, so we saw some fantastic um, applications coming through. Um, we're really happy with what the class is sort of shaping up like um, in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, diversity, some really interesting um, professional experience, sector backgrounds. Um, so it, it's looking fantastic. And we, we just kind of look for more of that throughout rounds two and three now. I think a common question is, you know, shall I avoid the final round, which is now round mm -hmm. three and not round four? Um, that's not the case. Um, we, of course, you know, expect certain um, nationalities and regions to be applying at various times in the year. Um, the third round we wouldn't have if we didn't have spaces um, in the class. So it's absolutely mm. um, an opportunity to apply. Um, and I would recommend, you know, speaking to us in the recruitment and admissions team if you're if you have any questions about sort of when to apply. Um, the most important thing is that you always submit your best application because you can only apply yeah. once per year. Um, yeah. And so, you know, unless you feel that uh, you can strengthen your application, then, you know, the time is now to apply um, unless you feel you can strengthen it for a future round, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, also, I mean, we do have a few minutes left. Uh, and before I ask, take a question from the audience, I just want to remind you all that there will be an MBA open day uh, on the 4th of December. So make sure to join then and ask all of the questions that you guys have. Um, but yeah, uh, touching upon like the work experience, a lot of people have asked um, if it is important to have physical international experience to be considered for the LBS MBA. And we've had similar questions like this as well. So if we could discuss this one, it'll be great. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, and I think it can sometimes cause a bit of imposter syndrome because people think, wow, such an international school. Um, you know, they see some of our student ambassadors who have lots of international experience and think that it's a must. Um, it's not a requirement. Um, sometimes people will have, you know, only lived and worked within one city um, in, in the world um, throughout their career. And that's absolutely fine. Um, you may have had international experience still because you've worked within an international team or you're a part of a company that has um, international teams and, and you work, you know, even internally across um, various regions. So um, that is all international experience too, um, but it is not a requirement to have physical um, international professional experience. Mm -hmm. All right, we just have a couple of minutes to go. Probably the last question and one question that I love asking uh, is that uh, Charlotte and Tanu, this question goes out to both of you, is that what is your personal opinion about what sets LBS or London Business School apart from any other business school in the world? Tanuj, if we can start with you and then we'll sure. move on to Charlotte. Yeah, I think, um, so the location, I think, was something that was very unique to, to LBS because I've been living in London for a while and I still love it and there's always something to do here and I'm especially enjoying exploring London with my friends who haven't explored it uh, and looking at it from a new lens. So that plus the vibrant uh, business community we have in London where, you know, we have the Silicon Roundabout, we have a very active fintech scene. So there's a, a lot of more VC investment, investment is coming into Europe and in London uh, lately. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those were the reasons where I thought that coming to LBS will give me both the cultural, you know, experience, but also the business experience that I needed to, you know, uh, excel in my career. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the flexibility uh, is just unparalleled because I have been able to do courses, whether it's over five weeks, 10 weeks, one week, and I'm able to make time for 
things that I really want to experiment with, things that I want to do, whether it's social, travel, career, internships, and any of those things. So, yeah. Something for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Charlotte, what's your opinion on that? Um, well, I'm so pleased to know you started because I can um, take all of those and say I agree with all of those ones, of course. <laughs> um, I think, you know, for me, it's really around the community at London Business School as a staff member, as a student, faculty. Um, Tanush said it, it is like a family at London Business School. Uh, we finally met all of our MBA 2022 students in person just last week um, with us being in a virtual world while we were going through admissions. And then uh, last year, a little bit of hybrid teaching. Um, and so, you know, it was just a joy to meet up with all of our student ambassadors and that sort of family feeling is really reiterated. Um, and the, yeah, the special sense of community at London Business School and sense of belonging for everyone, um, I think is what really drives us to make impact as a school. Fantastic. Great. But yes, uh, I think we, that is all for today. Thank you so much for joining today and giving us a wonderful presentation. And yes, just reminding once again, do join the MBA Open Day at LBS, 4th of December, guys. Ask your questions there. And that is it. <laughs> Thanks a ton. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Bye -bye. Thank you, Tanuj. Bye. 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 Stay safe, everyone. Take care. <laughs>